Hi! Welcome to iEducator. This is Teacher Jeff. I'm an educator and an engineer by profession. And today, we will discuss theoretical framework. And in today's lesson, there are five key areas that I'm going to be highlighting today. First, we have the theory and theoretical framework defined. So we will be defining what a theory is and what a theoretical framework is as well. And also we have the goal of theoretical framework, how to build a theoretical framework, the structure of the theoretical framework, and I will be giving you as well an example of a theoretical framework. And so for this matter, let us discuss first our first key area of our lesson that would be the theory and theoretical framework defined. So what is meant by a theory and theoretical framework then? If we say theory, it is developed by researchers to explain phenomena, draw connections, and make predictions. And in many cases, to challenge and extend existing knowledge within the limits of critical bounding assumptions. And if we say theoretical framework, it explains the theories that support your research, showing that in your work is grounded in established ideas. Now, what do we mean by this? In other words, uh, your theoretical framework introduces and describes the theory that explains why the research problem under study exists. And aside from that, theoretical framework is also a researcher-made framework in the form of a diagram which explains the scope and range of a concept or construct discussed in combination of two or more theories used in the study. And take note that your theoretical framework should appear after the first page of your theoretical background. Again, I would like to reiterate, your theoretical framework should appear after the first page of your theoretical background. All right, so that ends our first discussion on the first key area of our uh, lesson for today, which is the definition of theory and theoretical framework. And so for that matter, let us now move on to our second key area, and that will be the goal of theoretical framework. So what do you think is the goal of a theoretical framework? Well, the goal of theoretical framework is to present and explain theories and models other researchers have already developed. Now, there may be many different theories about your topic, so the theoretical framework also involves evaluating, comparing, and selecting the most relevant ones. And by framing your research within a clearly defined field, you make the reader aware of the assumptions that inform your approach, showing the rationale behind your choices. So this part of your dissertation or thesis lays the foundations that will support your analysis, helping you interpret your results and make broader generalization. All right, so the next key area of our lesson, that would be how to build a theoretical framework. Now, in order to do that, we need to strictly follow the three steps in creating a theoretical framework, okay? So what is our first step then? Now, the very first step in creating our theoretical framework, that would be to identify your key concepts. What do you mean by identifying your key concepts? Well, the first step is to actually pick out, okay? So we need to pick out the key terms from your problem statement and research questions. Now, concepts often have multiple definitions, correct? Now, so the theoretical framework involves clearly defining what you mean by each term. Now, in order for us to... Uh, better understand how to identify your key concepts. Now, let me give you an example. Okay, for example, company X is 
struggling with the problem that many online customers do not return to make subsequent purchases. So, men meaning, um, there are customers who are purchasing online, but they do not or they no longer uh, go back and make another purchases. And so, for that matter, management wants to increase customer loyalty and believes that improved customer satisfaction will play a major role in achieving this goal. Now, to investigate this problem, what we need to do is to identify and plan to focus on the following problem statement, objective and research question. Okay, so based on our given example, what do you think is our problem here? Okay, based on our example given, our problem is clearly about many online customers do not return to make subsequent purchases, right? So what's the objective of the firm? The objective is to increase customer loyalty. So based on our problem and objective, our research question may be, how can the satisfaction of company access online customers be improved in order to increase customer loyalty. So what do you think are our key concepts here then? Well, the concepts of customer loyalty and customer satisfaction as well are clearly essential to this particular study. And so for that matter, the theoretical framework will define these concepts and discuss theories about the relationship between them, okay? The second step in creating a theoretical framework that would be to evaluate and explain relevant theories. So we need to select the most important theory or theories related to your key concepts. So by conducting a thorough literature review, we can determine how other researchers have defined and drawn connections between these key concepts which we had identified. So as you write your theoretical framework, what you do is to, is to aim to compare and critically evaluate the approaches that different authors have proposed. Now, after discussing different models and theories, you establish the definitions that best fit your research and then justify why this is the case. So in more complex research projects, you might combine theories from different fields to build your own unique framework. And make sure to mention the most important theory. Again, you need to uh, mention the most important theory, like I said earlier, related to your key concepts and if there is a well-established theory or model okay that you don't want to apply to your own research then explain why it isn't suitable for your purposes and finally the last step in creating a theoretical framework that would be to evaluate and explain related readings now in this area what we need to do is to review related readings that are related to our study. So if I say related readings, okay, what I mean about this is that I'm referring to the legal basis of our study, which has either direct or indirect implications to the government thrust. So examples of related readings are the different laws or bills or any legislations which are of great relevance, okay, or impact to your study. So examples of these are presidential decrees. We have Republic Act, may it be Dep Ed Order or Department of Education Order. We have memorandum circulars, etc. All right. And the next key area that we're going to be discussing now, that would be the structure of the theoretical framework. Now, in a thesis or dissertation, the theoretical framework is sometimes integrated into a literature review chapter, but it can also be included as its own chapter or section. So in our case, our 
theoretical framework is not integrated in a literature review. Instead, it has a separate section. Now, if your research involves dealing with a lot of complex theories, it's a good idea to include a separate theoretical framework chapter. And finally, the last key area that we're going to be discussing now, that would be an example of a theoretical framework. So right now, at this point in time, we will now create a theoretical framework. So we will be applying the three steps in creating a theoretical framework. Now, before creating our theoretical framework, last time, uh, we discussed statement of the problem, correct? And of course, uh, this was the uh, title that was given as an example. So so if you haven't watched uh, the discussion and the statement of the problem, um, I have included that one in our uh, description box below. So please uh, go to that link first in order for you to better understand what a theoretical uh, framework is, okay? So our title before, uh, that was the impact of parental involvement towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners. So in order to create our theoretical framework, let us revisit first our steps, okay? So take note that our first step is to identify our key concept. Now, based on our research title given, we have already identified last time our basic key concepts. When I say basic key concepts, um, I'm referring to the different variables of our study. And what is the difference again between independent and dependent variable? If we say independent variable, this refers to our cause. So an, in an experiment, this is the variable that is manipulated or controlled by the investigator. On the other hand, if we say dependent variable, this refers to our effect. And in an experiment, it is the variable that the investigator measures to determine the effect of the independent variable. So last time, we had already identified our independent and dependent variables. So we had identified parental involvement as our independent variable or the cause and literacy and numeracy skills as our independent variables or the effects. For example, um, why is parental involvement the cause? Because if we ask ourselves, um, does it necessarily mean that if your parents, okay, are greatly involved with you as your child, as their child rather, then would it mean that you will have a high literacy and numeracy skills? Okay, so these are some of the many considerations that we need to identify for this particular study. So the second step in creating or constructing a theoretical framework, that would be to evaluate and explain relevant theories. And after having evaluated and explained relevant theories, you need to select the most important theory or theories related to your key concepts. So in doing that, so as you can see, this is an example of our theoretical uh, background, okay, or theoretical framework. In my left side, this is where our theory should be located, okay, and connected to your theory is your uh, related readings. And your related readings, like I said earlier, this is gonna be your legal basis okay the legal basis of your study okay so there should be either direct or indirect implication to the government thrusts okay and below that will be the discussion of your independent variable all right and connected to your independent variable that will be the discussions of your dependent variables just in case you have two dependent variables and also, finally, connected to that would be your output of your study. So what's your goal? What do you want to do? So you should be uh, defining your output of your study. So in order to apply 
our format for our theoretical framework, then let me provide you an example based on our research title given. Okay, going back quickly to our, our title, our title says the impact of parental involvement towards the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners. And take note that our independent variable is the parental involvement and our dependent variables are the literacy and numeracy skills of the kindergarten learners. So in this case, so since this is going to be the location of our theory, so I have selected uh, a sample theory that is, okay, the theory that I have selected is six propositions of a social theory of numeracy, interpreting an influential theory of literacy. So this is by Craig Jeffrey and Guzman Linnet, 2018. And secondly, Connected to your theory is your legal basis of your study. So in this case, the legal basis that I have selected to, for my study, that would be the Dep Ed Order 18 series of 2017, which states guidelines on the utilization of the 2017 Every Child a Reader program funds for the early language, literacy, and numeracy program professional development component, all right? So this is where my theory is located. Connected to that is my legal basis. And the third one is below my theory and legal basis, that would be my independent variable. And take note, the independent variable that we have identified is parental involvement. And below your Independent variable are your two dependent variables, okay? So we have dependent variable number one and dependent variable number two. So in that case, so below our independent variables, we have the dependent variable number one, which is literacy skills. And our second dependent variable is the numeracy skill. And finally, the last a part of our... Um, framework that would be the output what do we want to do okay so what is our goal so in this case our goal or output that would be uh, a proposed literacy and numeracy skills enhancement plan and so we would be able to augment the literacy and numeracy skills of our kindergarten learners so this is our main goal of our study all right, so this is how you create a theoretical framework. All right, so I think that ends our discussion for today. If you have questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button for the latest updates. Thank you.